Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode I have at least three things to launch uh, for our Drez Armada and hopefully we'll get to transfer some of the stuff to Drezville depend on how the launches uh, go and of course whether the system holds up and the game crashes and all that but that's just a normal flow of things. But here we have the Rocky 3 and I'm not going to bother opening the fairing. You've seen the Rockies before. We'll see it on launch afterwards. I've got this tuned to Drez, so I should really... But uh, that, that's instructive because I do have the thrust weight ratio for Drez all lined up. But uh, yeah, let's uh, get the Kerbin one just for launch. Anyway, so it's got plenty of Delta V for our Drez transfer. As you can see, this is the transfer stage here. Though It does take a while. Uh, I mean, this is actually transfer. This is arrival. So that's how that's split up. And then the vehicle itself, the Rocky 3 will only drill for water because again we have our Drez Oasis in orbit already and it's going to take the water and convert it to fuel and other resources. I think it can do mod propellants and of course uh, we can just get water which is very important for Kerbal life. Uh, so yeah, that's what it's for. It's currently got no water in but it's got plenty of fuel as you can see. So, yeah, with a full load of water, its Delta V is borderline to get off of Drez, so I'll have to be careful with that, and we'll see how that goes. Um, might want to, on the first time we landed on Drez, only fill one, to, one of the water tanks just to see how much Delta V it takes to get back up and that sort of thing. So, a little bit nervous of that, but uh, here we go again with a Strider launch, and I think it worked out pretty well last time, so we're going again this time with this. And the other launches will have a Strider Light, and then a Strider Superleggera, the Strider SL. So we will have uh, multiple different rockets to launch in this episode. So without further ado, let's take it out to the launch pad and get it into orbit. We're still a few days away from the actual Drez transfer. So once we get everything into orbit, then we'll time morph to the right date and then we'll proceed. Okay, here we are, the Strider on the launch pad. Very big payload, as you can see. The the Rocky 3 is, of course, a bulky payload for this size launcher. It was meant for the Maximus, which is a much wider launcher, uh, even though this widens out here. Okay, so SAS is on, throttle is up, all systems look nominal. You can see the capacity of 30,000 water there in Honey Badger cargo pods, and the rest is right there. Mop for docking back up with uh, the the Duna Oasis, uh, not Duna Oasis, sorry, Drez Oasis. Duna Oasis has a nice ring to it though. Okay, we should definitely consider launching a Duna Oasis at some point when we get that transfer window. Okay, here we go. Very expensive mission, of course, uh, a lot riding on this. Uh, we're talking about definitely over 200,000, I think, uh, hold on, let me just, that's resources I want, yeah, it's uh, closer to 300,000, I think. This time I'll remember to double check that the boosters are recovered, but that happens after a while, so I have to wait for the message to pop up, but I've cleared all my messages, so hopefully it'll be clear when that happens. So I am thinking about starting new series in 1.1. Uh, Obviously I didn't start a new colonization series in 1.0, especially because uh, we already knew when 1.0 was released that there would be a 1.1. And so I've decided it was uh, no point to hurry and 1.1 would break all sorts of things because it's Unity 5 and who knows, all the mods would have to be adjusted and all that. Um, I don't know I'm still pondering whether this series will continue into the start of the new series. I mean, obviously I can't convert this series into a new series. That'd be tough. But could do uh, some overlap. We certainly haven't done everything I wanted to do in this series. It's not like we have huge colonies all over the place. Uh, we are practically the only place that we have a decent sized surface colony is the moon and that's uh, still not as robust as it could be okay here we go set
Okay, looks like they've separated a little bit of skew, but again, not colliding with each other. Okay, I'm gonna go for fairing set. Should be clear of everything, we'll see. Yep, all nice and clear. And there you see, we've got actually two uh, stages here. Uh, this is the actual transfer stage, and this is actually the arrival stage. And uh, then the the Rocky 3 will have to get itself down to the surface. Both tanks are water, so it's not water and minerals. The Rocky 2 had water and minerals. This just has water. Okay, we'll go with Apoapsis 120 and coasting now. Okay, well, while I would like the 325 meters per second, I think we will allow this to deorbit. And so I'm going to separate here. And we're going to have the arrow spikes do the rest. Not much acceleration on these arrow spikes, but they're reasonably efficient. And of course, much more power than a nuke would have. I opted not to go with the nuke because of the thrust to weight ratio. Okay, I'll take that orbit, 122 by 500, uh, by 105. Okay. Alright, so 97 tons to orbit. And that's how it looks right now. So, these drills will drill for water. Two water containers, as you know. Uh, some solar panel re. Let's get those out. Okay, looks all decent. We've actually got two LV uh, T95s in line here. Yep, okay. So hopefully that can withstand Drez. Of course, this system was originally built for Minmus, not Drez. Uh, and Minmus is much lighter. Uh, landing this thing on Drez is probably going to be a lot trickier. We'll see. Okay, so uh, back to VAB for the next launch. Uh, before I forget, let's check stage recovery. Yes, uh, 14,500 for that one. Same, same, same. So four boosters recovered as expected. And 14,500 times four is 58,000. So that's how much we got back from that launch. A lot of the cost was the payload. Uh, it looks like the cost of that launch is 267000 It's not too bad. The payload, if we take off the fairing, take a look at it, uh, 69000 So that gives you an idea. A lot of what we lost was fuel, so there was no recovering that anyway. Okay, so let's take a look at the next launch. So here we have the Drez Rover on a Strider Light. And the thing about the Drez rover is it's got space for one Kerbal. It does have a probe core, so it doesn't need the Kerbal in order to operate. It has a thermometer, but no other scientific experiments. It is for the Kerbal to get around from biome to biome in order to do stuff, like uh, samples and all. And uh, it does have a LV-1 at the bottom here, which is quite capable of lifting it off the ground. Uh, the ro rover part ends here, by the way. And uh, it has pipe endpoints uh, so that I can connect to get resources, which is important because of this tank back here. And it does have its liquid fuel tank here and also on the sides here and here for balance. Uh, but on its tail, it's got uh, the party piece. It's got the Rockamax 487S, which is way more thrust than it needs when it comes to when it comes to Drez. But uh, that means that with full tanks, it can actually make orbit on its own. So that's sort of important. Uh, and helpful. Uh, this this little engine is more for short hops. It's not very efficient. So uh, yeah, that's uh, basically out. And that's important because it can uh, use its pipe endpoints to connect to this, which will also land it on the surface. It's got the Rockmax 2477s, and so it's going to be in charge of the landing. It's got landing struts, as you can see. Um, this the rover can also hook up to get power. Uh, it's got the extra solar panels. The rover only has this one. It's got capacitors because I wanted to try them out. I haven't actually used them yet. 
so that's there. The wheels are, uh, well, they're they're. Uh, we know that with the Moon Masters, sizing them up makes them better in general. But I don't know how much grip they're gonna have on Drez. We'll have to see. It is a very low-lying vehicle, so that's good. Hopefully, it'll have a lot of grip. It's the, it's got a reaction wheel in the back here, and so yeah, uh, this tank on this is supposed to be locked and used just to refuel the rover, uh, in case that's necessary. You know, it, the rover might need to get a, over some craters or something like that, rough terrain. And so that's why it's got its engine and liquid fuel tank. Also, it, it gives more downforce so that it can get more grip. If it was too light, then that would be a bad idea. Um, I didn't. This wasn't really the original design I wanted, but we seem to be lacking certain structural parts that I wanted to use. So uh, since we didn't have that, this is the design I came up with. Anyway, uh, so that tank is used just to refuel the rover. This tank is used to get it on the ground. Um, probably we'll still have more fuel left over after that. It's got RCS, RCS tank back here. Uh, it's got extra life support. Life support very important. Remember, life support is a thing. And uh, we've got a life support container here. And altogether, this will be 163 days worth of life support. So we'll have to drop some supplies off or build a base on Trez in order to uh, continue supplying this if we want to continue uh, the livelihood of our Kerbal. I have not built any payload to create a Drez base yet, so that's a, that's a issue. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say that my sequence of Drez missions are the best planned thing ever, but we'll see. This is the transfer stage, of course, with another LVT-95. And so let's package it up and try it out. Obviously, we're uh, sending it uncrewed. And it won't be crewed until it gets to the surface. It doesn't have enough life support to handle uh, Kerbal all the way. Okay, so after I check staging of that, we'll save and launch. So this is the first ever launch of the Strider Light. So a little bit nervous. On the bright side, uh, we don't have any Kerbal on board, so that's a safe thing. Let's see, we've got uh, 4,692,000 there. I think that's after the cost of this. Let, let's just check. I don't remember. Well, we'll see. Okay, anyway, throttle up, SAS on, and launch. Yeah, that's after the cost of this. Okay. Gotta pay attention to those funds. I think I need to add 90 roll to this to prevent it from rolling uh, with those things vertical. I don't want the boosters vertical, I want them flat like this. I think we should start out a little bit earlier than last time. Last time I was waiting for the roll to complete before starting the pitch. Okay, well, looking good so far. Quite an energetic little rocket here. Yep, definitely a uh, very good trajectory this time around. So we'll have some extra fuel left perhaps in the core stage. Maybe I'll hang on to it this time. When say we were in desperate need of it for the transfer, we've got a lot of fuel available to us. Okay, booster set. As you can see, I mean, even now we've got like orbital velocity amounts of delta V. Okay, we're gonna go for fairings up here. Huge fairings. Uh oh! Crud. Okay, well, those, that wasn't good. Uh, we'll try and rescue the payload to orbit, I suppose. This does not have the TWR for this sort of thing. It does have a lot of Delta V, as you can see, 4,000, but not the TWR. Fairing separations, I tell you, sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't. I really ought to learn, but, well, gotta separate fairing sometime, but I guess I really should just wait until Everything's nice and stable. What kind of TWR can we expect eventually? 
uh, it maxes out at one. So this is gonna be a problem. Well, I can report that at least we recovered the the boosters again. So no problems there. A little bit further downrange it looks like, because we got less than fourteen thousand five hundred on each of them. But this is probably not gonna survive. Hmm. But I wonder if we could make a soft landing on the peninsula and recover this portion. Not this not this stage obviously, but the rest of it. I don't think so. I don't think that would be possible. I think this is too heavy. Okay, back in the atmosphere we go. Our current trajectory looks like this. So if we're going to hit the peninsula with anything left over, we're going to have to retro burn actually. Still want to limit the vertical speed here. Let's get a better indicator. Okay, I think I better ditch this stage. It's. Well, we'll eventually have some decent thrust, but not really enough. I guess it's going pretty well right now. We'll have to just stage this one off. This one won't have enough. Okay, let's stage. Let's see. Uh. Oh, this en these engines aren't... Well, okay, let's just stage. Uh, I want... That one. Oh, come on. Oh, oh what? Oh. Activate engine. Okay. There we go. Oh, no, I don't want the LV-1. Darn it. Well... Well, the LV-1 doesn't have enough thrust to hold us up, but uh, but the uh, Rockamax 487S does. But that means we'll be landing like this and probably flop down. We'll have to see where it survives that sort of thing. Well, we are uh, hitting terminal velocity here, and our vertical speed is actually going lower, as you can see. Lots of drag on this thing. Lots of Delta V2. Very wiggly. The tail engine isn't, isn't exactly in line with the center of mass. Oh, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Oh, come on. Don't go wiggly on me. Don't go wiggly on, don't go wiggly on me. I waited too long to start burning. Uh, oh, sorry, going up. Oh, splash down, hop. Okay, uh, well, the rover survived. I guess that's good, right? Recover vessel. Okay, well, we recovered 7,000 funds from that. Uh, could have been worse. Um, yeah. Well, I think we demonstrated that we've got quite a rover there. But, uh, yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's try launching it again. Oh, while I'm in the VAB, I should point out that the pod in front of the rover is this Herp maintenance pod. So that's, that's the pod that I used for that. Okay. Okay, bringing out to the launch pad without any crew. Here we go. Alright, here we go, and I guess all I have to do is wait till engine shut down to release the fairings. That again. Okay. So, yes, everything looks set up right. Let's launch. Well, 
Okay, getting ready for a booster step here. Probably are at around uh, 24 kilometers, 25 kilometers, somewhere around here. And set. And we'll wait a decently long time before fairing separation, even though carrying the heavy fairings with us is a pain. But we'll do it. Okay, we are now flat. That's certainly no guarantee of safety. So we'll just wait until engine shut down before separating fairings. We'll go to 120 kilometers again. That way when we pl plot our transits out, they'll look about the same. Okay, engine shut down. And so now we can release the fairings. It's only 32 meters per second, but every little bit counts. Okay, so once again we try to deliver our rover to orbit, and this time it's looking good. Hmm. Orbital Oasis debris, uh, oh, that, that, oh, our uh, stage the, from the, uh, no, I see, uh, Drez Oasis, from the Drez Oasis launch just came back in. And we lo lost that. Uh... Yeah, this is the stage from the Rocky 3 launch. That just returned back in. And we've got some pieces that are labeled as stage destroyed from other bits. Uh, but we've recovered more boosters. Okay, good. All right, here we go for orbit. So here we have 600 meters per second, I guess we'll keep it. We've got pipe endpoints on the payload that could be used to transfer surplus fuel elsewhere if it turns out we have spare. So uh, we'll, 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 we'll just keep it. It's better safe than sorry. So uh, we'll, we'll ha have this stage hang out with us and start our transfer off. We brought the fuel up all the way anyway. Okay, we'll get it to there, 124 by 116. Let's get the solar panel on this rover out. Okay, it looks clear. All right, very good. So this is delivered, and now on to our third launch. Well, technically fourth, but uh, our third hopefully successful launch. Okay, so here we go. This is the most nerve-wracking launch. First of all, because we're gonna have to put a Kerbal in. We don't have a controller, uh, remote controller uh, probe core on this. On this. this is uh, CRT. This is like the one we sent to Duna, except more catered to Drez with its fuel and thrust. And also, instead of using the Rockamax 48.7S's, I'm using the LV-909 here. And that's because we don't need quite as much thrust as we did for Duna, and so this is a little bit more efficient. Okay, so uh, this is the situation in general. Now this has a lot less Delta V altogether than the other launches, so a lot less buffer as far as getting into Drez orbit. Once in Drez orbit, it'll have to rendezvous uh, with our Oasis in order to refuel before it does anything else. Otherwise, it's meant to be a crew rescue transfer vehicle around Drez and also be able to return that crew back to Kerbin. That's why it has parachutes. Also, good to have parachutes just in case something goes wrong with the launch. This is also very nerve-wracking because, of course, this is the Strider SL, which means we are, uh, we are launching with uh, SRB in the beginning. And then here we have a skipper. So it's like that. So SRB skipper and then LV-909, not untraditional. But uh, yeah, lots of lots of life support, 263 days for three crew, but we're only gonna send one crew up on this. And probably this uh, crew member is going to be the one who will get to drive the rover and do the science on the surface because this will land down on the surface of Drez. And I guess we'll have Genemini, Kerman handle that. And so, that's the idea. Okay. 
Yep, this is going to be fun. Let's see how this works out. Now, if this very awkward looking launch does happen to work out, then this will be a preferred crew transfer uh, launch. I mean, we've got we've got capacity for three Kerbals. We've got like 3,000 Delta V in the pod itself after we get to orbit. So yeah, this will be a very good thing if we can make it work out. And uh, though the LV-909 uh, will probably have to replace in some cases with more powerful uh, engines in terms of thrust, because this is really only meant for Drez. Uh, even the Moon might require the Rocket Max 48.7s instead. There were four Rock Max 48.7s, which means more than double the thrust of this LV-909. Uh, though, uh, if we look at uh, Mechjeb quickly, uh, we'll see 0.33 thrust to weight ratio at the beginning. So. You know, it'll, it'll be enough for Drez, and possibly even the Moon. Okay, so Genemini Kerman, here we go. And remember that there are four Rockamax uh, 2477s at the bottom acting as uh, vernier thrusters to help with attitude control. Alright, here we go. And those 2477s get their fuel from this tank up here which happens to have just enough fuel to last as long as the SRB. Let's see, which way does this rotate it? Okay, it's rotating the correct direction. Good. Now, we will use the skipper's fuel to start this on its way to Drez. I'm not going to try and deorbit the skipper stage. The skipper stage also has a lot of thrust, so we don't actually need to go steep on this. It'll be able to handle itself pretty well. This is definitely the first time I've ever tried a launch like this before. This is a very unique design, and I haven't tried anything even remotely like it. And it's only because of the configuration of the strider that I'm even considering this. Because I know that the, the 2477s don't have that much gimbling, not as much as they do in 1.0, I am keeping it quite close to the prograde vector. Oh, that is a good policy in general, of course. But I'll force that issue too. Obviously this was also designed with the, the normal 3 Kerbal command pod in mind. So that could be launched on this as well. Doesn't have a heat shield though. I wonder how many of the parachutes are really only for, meant for Duna. I, I don't know if this is really safe to bring uh, Kerbal back all the way to the surface of Kerbin. We might want to do uh, a probe core test with it to see if that's safe or not. The reason I didn't put a probe core on is because we don't have one of the flat probe cores. We've only got the Pobodobodine hexes and all. Okay. Oh, so the the Rocket Maxes actually lasted for less time than the SRB. I wonder why that is. They said they claimed the same burn time. Anyway, here we go. Skipper. Whoa, something blew up. So here we go. Now the Tal command pod looks okay. It's very spaceshipy kind of thing going on here. Problem though, uh, with the fairing on this fairing adapter here, uh, there isn't any way for it to extend its solar panels. So we're gonna have to make the transfer pretty darn quickly, or at least quickly enough so that the electric charge doesn't run out. So we'll have to monitor that situation. Nope, we got a message. Looks like that uh, booster was recovered. Um, no? This is only the top of it. For some reason, the bottom of the booster wasn't recovered. I mean, the actual SRB wasn't recovered. It's only the chutes, the liquid tank that fed the 2477s, and the adapter. Um, we're getting more messages. The 2477s are lost. Uh, 
I guess somehow the SRB exploded. Hold on. Um, so, separation damage by engine exhaust from large skipper. Um, the SRB collided with a fairing. One of the, well, presumably one of the fairings on the adapter. Huh. And then, uh, one of the, and of course once that was gone, the 2477s were just flying around free. Okay, I don't know, well, again, fairings, they do damage, apparently. This is the only case where a fairing could collide with one of the SRBs. The SRBs separate before any fairing issue takes place on any of the other launches. So we might have to reconsider the reusability, uh, the efficiency of this system. But anyway, it's still looking pretty good. Okay, Genemini Kerman is in a 131 by 117 kilometer orbit, and we've got about 500 meters per second left in the skipper stage, so that'll give us a good kick as we proceed to Drez. Total delta V about 4,050. So, I think, partly because the game has already crashed twice during this recording, and because I want to ponder whether I want to send anything else over to Drez, I'll, uh, hold on, we got a little pause there, so it looks like the game is uh, probably going to crash again if I try to continue, so, yeah, I'll I'll save the dress transfers and arrivals for next time, then that's what we do next time. Um, I, if I come up with something else to launch to Drez, I'll, uh, I'll have another launch, but uh, maybe we'll just keep it to transfers. I'll see if I can think up something, if there's something else I suddenly remember I need. But, uh, yeah, I will probably uh, transfer Genemini first so that we don't run out of electric charge here. Yep, so uh, that's the plan. Uh, we're really taking Drez quite seriously this time, so hopefully that'll pay off uh, once we get over there and everything will be all right. Cross your fingers. Okay, so uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.